Good morning and welcome aboard, uh, sports fans. Um, welcome to our coverage of the 2018 Canadian National uh, X-Wing Championships. Um, we are in round one and I am your host, Timbo Slice, for day 1A. And I am joined by my faithful compatriot, uh, Mr. Sumit Vat. Sumit, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing excellent, Tim. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Well, thank you for uh, keeping me company today, mate. It promises to be an exciting day. Um, we're going to jump right into uh, talking about uh, our players. Um, we are in down round one of six on the today. We are going to be talking about the tournament, uh, the structure that we're looking at, uh, some of the prizes and some of the uh, the glory that we can be looking at for uh, for today. So um, let's start by talking with our player on the left, Mr. Evan Cameron. Evan is. Um, one of the more gifted players from Vassal. He just got promoted this year into the deep core, and uh, he's very gifted with PAL bases. He, he played Commonwealth defenders for quite a long while. And uh, today he's brought um, a stress-eating Captain Yor, um, a standard push the limit Inquisitor, and an expertise quick draw with fire control system, lightweight frames, and the special ops training title. And he is not, uh, he must have offended some deity across the world because he's definitely pulled a challenging matchup uh, for round two. We're going to talk about our player on the right um, who is actually not named Ken, uh, Ken M. He's named uh, Cam M, uh, C-A-M. This matchup, folks, is the, the battle, the epic struggle to determine who is the one true Cameron. We have Evan Cameron versus Cameron Murray. We have PTL versus Grand River X-Wing uh, in, in a fun way to kick off the day. So Evan Cameron has shown up uh, with a, um, an interesting uh, Nim Miranda loadout. It's a, um, it's a Nim Miranda with bombs primarily. Nim does have a harpoon missile, um, but Miranda is equipped with the experimental interface which means that she's going to be able to utilize those cluster mines the way that old Miranda used to be able to do before Advanced Slam. Evan Cameron rolled um, uh, the initiative roll, and he has taken uh, initiative. I believe I saw Nim move first, so we'll just verify that on the second round. Yes, he did. So um, uh, Before the game started, I tried talking with each of the players to see what their process was, their thought process on the game. Uh, Evan went into this knowing full well that this is a really, really bad matchup for him with the experimental interface and all the bombs and all that kind of stuff. So his plan going into it was to cluster up the rocks, make it harder for Cam's uh, ships to slam, and he desperately wants to take Miranda off the board as fast as possible. He said if he can't get her off fast, he's already lost the game. Uh, I, know, I know how that feels. Sometimes when you play into Miranda, if uh, if the engagement doesn't go your way, it can be a, it can be a quick match. Yeah, he's trying his best to hold the Inquisitor back for as long as possible. Uh, yeah. But as you can see, he's going to have to be a bit aggressive based on Cam's opening maneuvers there. Yeah, Cam understands that his list has an inherent advantage just with the uncancelable damage. Um, so, I mean, if he can get in there and use his twin laser turrets to pick off some shields, uh, looks like we've already got one dan yep, nothing damaged on the first round of combat, which is great. That was Inquisitor and Miranda trading shots. We got a PS8 Nim with yep. Deadeye here, yep. which I'm really interested to see uh, how it goes. Because <laughs> Quickdraw's using his expertise, and it looks like that's just the one. I think Cam rolled maybe one too few dice there, but we'll uh, we'll just uh, have to deal with that. So all tokens cleared. Inquisitor retaining his target lock on Miranda, and. We've got quick draw just outside of range of Nim. Yeah, so and it looks like no damage traded on that turn. And Cam's opening thought process for his setup was that he also wanted to create that large cluster of my, uh, rocks. Uh, this was advantageous for him because he's got that he's got that bomb ability that ran, he can bomb everywhere with all of his ships. So he really wants to see if he can cause havoc with his ion bombs, get ships out of order, get them out of position. Um, he wants to be able to do proton missile the, the Nim special basically on his opening engagement. You could see last turn when he checked for distance, he knows he's just out of range. So you could probably assume Cam's not going to go faster than a one speed this turn with his Nim. I expect to see a bomb being thrown forward and probably a missile. It's going to be a hell of an alpha. I, I would, I'm, I'm expecting also Evan to bring that shuttle in to get it into the fight ASAP because I think he's worried about his damage output against this list. Well, I gotta agree with you, Samin. I mean, there there is unfortunately nowhere that, that uh, Yor can go where he's not uh, taking a bomb this turn. Um, I mean, he can zoom forward and try and block Nim, but he's still gonna eat a trajectory sim bomb behind himself. So, if Evan knows this, then he's deciding 
um, that it's just going to be a question of, you know what, can I delete Nim in one turn if I get eight dice on him? Um, possibly 12 if mm -hmm. quick draw fires twice. Absolutely. That's enough to delete a Nim in one go. But it looks like Evan has his sights squarely set on yeah. Madame Doni, which yeah. is not a bad call, mainly because of the fact that she's carrying Sabine. So if he can kill Sabine, I think that he's going to mitigate as much damage because literally every time a bomb goes off, Sabine could, you know... Uh, do uh, you know a quarter of uh, Inquisitor's damage here? Cam's gonna slam bomb. I think. Yeah, I think Cam's definitely gonna slam. I mean, Cam is no slouch with Miranda. The man no. has hundreds of reps here. If he slams left, try and get behind, uh, he could probably drop two cluster mine tokens right on the Inquisitor. I think you're right. Yep, three bank and then a cluster mine slam. Yeah, with experimental interface, proving yet again that no matter what you do to her, it's very difficult to hold Miranda down. She's still incredibly pointed. How are you, sir? Yeah. So yeah, uh, the um, uh, it's in the car. Okay. So they have to go across the street. It's in the car across the street. Fine, but you're going on a stream later. So Miranda is definitely doing what what you called him. He's just dropping the double bombs, and um, that 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 looks like it's oof. I think I think also what has happened, if everybody's keep for keeping track at home as well, is that because it's been a while since we've seen the slam bombing K wings with the special K list getting quote unquote nerfed, um, we we sometimes forget how far, how fast, and how good the K wing is at, at bombing. It's almost as if they designed it to do exactly this. Uh, Miranda is pretty much the only ship in the game that has not really suffer from the nerf because experimental interface still allows her to do that amazing 3-3 three, three, um, bomb and then uh, it's not that hard to clear the stress base on the position that she's in so cam has kind of set up an amazing run here he's already gotten one shield off the quiz with that position and um looks like he is going to take another sabine damage from the one that he took off um, Oh, no, so actually it looks like Evan luckily only rolled blanks on both of his attacks and only took the one damage from the Sabine. However, it's going to be very difficult for Evan to not take damage on that remaining cluster token unless he did a hard one to ship left, which he wouldn't have programmed because he wouldn't want to put himself on a rock. Um, so it's going to be difficult. That was a really, really nice setup run from Cam. Again, as, as Tim was saying earlier, Cam has, has many a rep with Miranda. Uh, every permutation of him, he he's very good at continually building her out in an effective way. He's been running Nim for quite a while since he was the first ever hyperspace qualifier victor at Mandalore. The first uh, ever, yes, like the first ever. like literally. Um, with um, with his um, day one massage, a day one a his his massage um, Nim. Uh, he's interesting. The the ion bombs are going to become incredibly brutal uh, for Evans' tactics because. If he can use the ion bombs yeah. to keep your out of position. Which is exactly what he said he wanted to do in his initial setup. He wanted to limit yours' ability to be in there. He wanted to control him for a couple of rounds, stick him onto a rock while he can... I, th I feel like Cam was going to want to try to peel off one of the aces, probably quiz first. Yeah. So Evan actually missed all of those cluster mines? He did and only That's took the one amazing. damage from Sabine, but he is flying directly over Oh, he's over flying the over one. another one right here. Is he doing the two straight? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna. Well, Sabine's already been used, right? Yes. Because he sh shields, so. Unless uh, I didn't have the table audio, so unless oh, so he's gonna palp the blank. Yep. yep. It's a good call. Got to keep that quiz going. And yeah, so based on the fact that Evan only lost one shield, so I mean, here's Evan the actually thing. called palp yeah. on that bomb and didn't even need it. Yeah. I mean, better so. safe than sorry, though. I think like palp is definitely like an insurance on your car or an house. Well, you when never you're want to use it, yeah. but you always want it to be there. You're right. I mean, in in, in any matchup. Palp is a good mechanic against bombs because, uh, and bombs is a good one against um, things because you're forcing your opponent to use Palp before you get to the combat phase, yeah. which is ideal because if you can do that, um, yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah, you're you're taking you, away that opportunity to maybe survive. Yeah, you're taking away a defensive mod to keep their ace open against your TLTs. You're uh, mitigating a possible crit damage. So Inquisitor looks like he's getting into a good position to take a pot shot against Nim. Quick draw as well. Oh, so Evan's actually looking like he might have set up the dream shot. We'll have to see. He's definitely got two shots on Nim, and Yor is just in the way. You're right. Miranda so slams. Yeah, he didn't get far enough forward to get the rear arc on Miranda, unfortunately. So it will be a double shot onto to Nim. 
Now, Samit, you and I need to start doing our permutation expectations on where that Miranda can go. Okay. Uh, well, she's got very green. limited options. Sorry, yeah, cutting green. you off there for no, being stressed. She's going to do a one bank or one forward or maybe a two forward. I would assume the one bank ship left would be the only thing that would make sense to me in this situation. Yeah, I would agree. He wants to come bring her back around again to do another slam bomb later on in the future. And the uh, the second stress token next to Miranda and the PTL target locks, those are just from the Inquisitor. Just forgot to move over there. Um, cam rolling range one, that's being called cocked. And we got four hits, two of them uh, sticking, and the shuttle taking two shields. I think that's an all right. I think that's an all right, all things considered, for Evan that turn. He, he didn't take any, any real damage on any of his aces. I mean, one shield off quiz hurt, but to draw out a set of cluster mines already is, is kind of advantageous what he took. Um, and, um, and now he's going to be able to hopefully put some damage into Nim. Nim taking one. Yeah, I mean, Evan needs to delete that shuttle as soon as he can. Sorry, uh, Cam needs to delete that shuttle um, as soon as he can. So this next turn is actually going to be a bit, of, a little bit interesting. It's going to, it's looking a little bit like the DVP out there. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to get around all these maneuvers because Cam, uh, Cam has left that ion bomb there as a nice little treat for um, Evan's ships. He's probably done that defensively, assuming that Cameron's shuttle is going to probably either go 1-4 or 1-bank, and then it's going to take that Ion Bomb next turn, and then he can Proton it again if he really wants to. Um, Quisitor also has to be very, very careful because the Nim has that hard 2 barrel roll advanced sense of genius amazingness. He could still maybe make him eat a Proton Bomb, and as anybody who's tried to fly a quiz in the current meta can tell you, that's like a 23% chance that he's dead instantly with yeah. that Proton direct hit or a major explosion. No, you're right. Um... Thanks again uh, to our producers, VWTV Live, for hosting today's stream. Folks, don't forget that if you're watching the content today, uh, VWTV Live is uh, simultaneously streaming multiple events from the Breakout Con, which is the um, convention here in the Toronto's core at the Sheridan Centre. Uh, they're going to be casting L5R all day long, as well as X-Wing. Uh, but we're, we're going to be commentating the good game, right, Samit? Mm -hmm, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, just to let our uh, producer Travis know, thank you uh, for getting the overlay up so quickly today, Travis. Uh, Evan Cameron has the initiative token, um, but Cam actually has initiative in this map, this match, because uh, Miranda moved first. So it looks like Evan passed it. He just had to. Uh, he had some other. Producing no, yeah, it's no problem. Just update it's round one, so we're gonna we're just gonna we're jumping right into things, and we're gonna get uh, we're gonna be a well-oiled machine by the end of the day. Uh, so tune in all day long, folks. We're going to have six rounds coming to you with a, a lunch break happening around 2.30 where I'm hoping to um, call in some of the, uh, the different X-Wing uh, communities from across Canada. Um, the, uh, the difficulty will be just lining everything up and getting the, uh, the technology to work on us, but uh, we'll get there. We're going to have some interesting guests later today talking about some things, but for, the, for the round one, Sumit and I really just wanted to talk about uh, the tournament structure what we can expect from the weekend, and, and that kind of thing. So as I mentioned, VTV, VTV Live is doing all day today. Mm -hmm. We're going to be casting X-Wing all day tomorrow with your hosts, Aaron Poppenhausen and Emily Parker, yep. uh, kicking off around 10 a.m. and running through until 8 p.m. And then on Sunday, we're, uh, we're going to be bringing you additional content. Uh, we're not sure who's going to be casting it because it will depend on who makes the cut. Yeah, uh, myself and Sumiter, we're playing tomorrow. So, uh, well, I think we can assume that I might be available for casting. Let's be real. Here. No, let's not be real because you're getting better, <laughs> guy. Tilt meat, yeah. honestly. Okay, well, um, Cameron and, and, and Evan here have gotten themselves into quite a little... Uh, Quite a little kerfuffle, I think. I gotta agree with you, Tim. I, don't, I would not. I mean, this is why I'm glad that I'm casting and not having to think this early in the morning. This is an interesting setup. I mean, Cam seems very sure of where he's going with all of his maneuvers. They're all down very quickly. Cam, again, as you said, very practiced, very good player. Kind of always has his game plan. He's he's uh, he's usually a couple of moves ahead. I've played him quite a few times. He he always seems to know where his stuff is going to go. So he's obviously got a plan. Um, I don't see it because I'm confused because Nim can sometimes hurt my brain with the way he can barrel roll and the hard twos and the bombing permutations. But I think I think Hem's in a really good situation right now with where his ships are located. Miranda's going to be able to clear his stress, take some TLT pot shots at people, keep Sabine alive and healthy. Nim is in a situation that he could harass everybody if he wants to. I'd imagine he's going to want to try to get a focus token, maybe torp somebody. I'm sorry, harpoon somebody, but we'll see. I think Nim is going to be very hard-pressed to catch somebody in arc when he doesn't have initiative. 
fair enough. Yeah, he, he, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, sense. quick. I mean, quick draws nine. Inquisitor's eight, and he's squirrely. Mm -hmm. And I don't see anywhere where Nim can go this round where he's going to get a target lock that's going to be advantageous to him. Well, the thing about the dead eye is it's really easy to. It's a lot easier to pro proc your torps. No, I know you don't need a target lock to shoot it, but you're right. I mean, I, I just don't see anywhere maintaining range two where, where Nim's going to be able to do it. So this um, makes sense to me from Evan. He knows he's going to eat the ion bomb, or he's trying to coax Evan into, into a cam into using that ion bomb this turn by putting the shuttle right there. He wants the shuttle out of the fight for as long as possible. He knows every single turn that pops around, his Inquisitor can hopefully stay alive. And I think that's what he's hoping for, um, because if he, if he forces uh, Cameron into deciding which of his two potential bombs he's going to have this turn to let go, that's an interesting option, I think. Oh, it's, a good, it's a good point. I mean... Um Cam, there, sorry, Evan there rolling for the cloud even though he doesn't need to. Uh, we forgot to put the uh, the collision detector on the on the palp shuttle, but it's kind of like a standard pasted build, so mm -hmm. I'm sure it didn't go uh, unguessed. The, the target locks belong to Miranda. Yep, there we go, boys. Miranda dropping her bomblet generator and uh, and piecing out there, trying to stay out of range of uh, of, of uh, Quick Draw's rear arc there. It's funny though, because if Quick Draw turns around this turn, he'll eat an Ion Bomb Sabine damage, but he might get to shoot. He's well, established his FCS on Nim. So you're thinking potentially a, a sloop? Nim has no genius here, folks, so he can't draw bombs after he moves. And um, yeah, so you know what? I'm just gonna go check something on the table. So meet, would you mind hosting for I a second? I can hold it down, no problem. Okay, so, so. Cam deciding to drop the proton bomb. Again, this is a good call, which means if he doesn't end up getting the quick draw, he can hold that proton bomb and clog up that spot for the Inquisitor to come through next turn and let the ion bomb go. Or if he gets his favorable exchange, he can decide which bomb is. That's the real power of the Rebel Nim, really allowing you all that extreme amount of, um, of mobility and adaptability with, with the way you do your bombing. Evan just is trying to do with his with his Inquisitor now that he's cleared his test. He doesn't want to... So it's unfortunate for him. I don't know if he's going to be able to fit a barrel roll. He's already decided to reacquire his target lock on Miranda. Now he's just deciding whether or not he wants to push. He's probably in range of the... of the... bomblet generator. and He's trying to not get himself in range of that proton bomb. The lesser of two evils in this situation. And that's exactly what Cam has been able to set up. He's been able to um, basically make it so there's no real good place for Evan's Inquisitor to go. It's, I mean, it's very, very good strategic planning by, by Cam here. He's been able to push, put, put Evan's stuff on the, on the back burner there. You're obviously eating that stress from the Inquisitor's push the limit, allowing him his full dial next turn, which will also be quite useful. And unfortunately, Quick Draw is definitely going to eat that proton bomb. But now Evan still has a chance to decide if he can reposition his ship, which I, that makes sense to me. This barrel roll definitely makes sense. Death Revive, would that, uh, that mic, would that be me talking right now? Is it a bit quieter? Let me know if that's the case. I'll try to speak a bit louder. Thank you, uh, Death Revive 1991. One of the mics is a little bit less uh, loud than the other one. All right, guys, thanks for the heads up. Let me know if this is better. It's round one, guys, so we're going to rely on you folks in chat just to help us balance things out. Oh, we got the X-Wing junkies watching us from Manitoba. Morning, boys. It might be a little bit early your time. So Evan had to use uh, Palp to not take any... Oh, he did still take one damage from the bomb Sabine, lid. yeah. So he is letting the ion bomb explode. We're going to get some Sabine damage there go. Interesting that he decided to... Oh, wait, because it's right, because this is Rebel Nim. It's not... Okay. He exactly. doesn't want to He doesn't want proton bomb himself. No. And he also wants to make sure that the Inquisitor is nowhere good to go next turn. Correct. Yeah. So has choice. Quick Draw moved and activated and barrel rolled Quick, over, eh? Quick Draw did all of that, yeah. I think, and I think anticipating the, the proton bomb him. going off. Yeah. Getting the double rear shark. Okay, okay so Quick Draw is going to take possibly two shots here and possibly get, uh, he might even get five, six damage into Nim at this point. And this will be the first time he has a chance to talk. I didn't realize he actually did damage in the first turn. It's my fault already. Okay. Catch the crit. Catch the crit. It's um, a white maneuvers are stressful. Was it? Yeah, that, so oh, okay. that's a loose stabilizer, and then that looks like a direct hit. That's a hit. direct hit, yeah. Yeah. 
So they are letting the proton bombs explode, okay. Oh, he let everything explode. Yeah, that looked like a direct hit on Quick Draw was, and yeah. a loose stabilizer. And of course, because that goes under shields, it does not proxy yeah. Quick Draw's ability to return fire. Okay, so looks like two more damage. Been dodged. Nim. Yeah. And which crit did Nim take? One more damage on Nim there. Nim took the uh, loose stabilizer, so if Nim does ah, uh, yes. white maneuvers, he takes a stress token, and Quick Draw took a direct hit, which is not great because now Quick Draw is just down to one health underneath his shield. Which means one more proton bomb kills him. Yeah, exactly. As Evan was saying with his matchup, the. Two TLTs, shuttle hits twice. Yeah. This is a tough matchup, as you can see, for Aces bombs. The Proton bombs that are just deadly for Aces. It's part of the reason why I stopped flying them. It was really difficult to fly them in the... It's, I mean, too much work is what I should say. To fly them, you have to keep them alive. So yeah. I gave up on it. I just went for big base ships that don't care about bombs. Jeez. That looks like Miranda taking a primary shot. Oh, sorry, for a regen. regen TLT shot. Uh, focusing up for two. Shuttle taking a damage. Yeah. Shuttle down to shieldless. Yeah, well, two Wizard down to TLT will do that for you. Yeah. So, I mean, Cameron has done a fair amount of damage to Evan's list, but Evan has done just as much back. He's got both the bombers at half health. Yeah. Got a crit going through here on Nim. Let's see exactly how much. Well, that should be on Miranda, so that's I believe. Hit crit going through on Nim there. Oh, you're right. And the weapons failure on Nim, rolling one last attack die. Ooh, that's certainly going to help. Evan continued to pull some great crits, and not to mention he pulled. Uh, that amazing round one where he dodged all of those bombs. Yeah. I don't know how he managed to roll blanks on all of those cluster mine tokens. It must be uh, it must be the luck of the Irish. Well, he this did weekend. have to spend palp on one of those, though. So. Yeah, he spent palp on the one he rolled two blanks. That's true. On That's true. Didn't even need it. <laughs> Just Evan Cameron shattering the laws of math. Yeah. On rolling cluster. I mean, sometimes tokens. that's what it's also what you need in a lot of the high variance matchups that we have in the game nowadays. You sometimes need that to go in your favor too. Well, good luck, X-Wing Junkies, but I can tell you that the magicians at uh, VWTV Live have worked extremely hard on that crit overlay for our, uh, for our event this weekend, and just to bring you some top-quality X-Wing coverage. Absolutely. It's a custom-written interface, and they've done a phenomenal job on it. Yeah. As a reminder to our streamers this, uh, and, and anybody who uh, watches this video after the fact on YouTube, uh, after much finagling, much begging on the part of the PTL, and those uh, folks who know them, we finally happy to announce that uh, that VWTV Live has established themselves an identity on Patreon. Oh, good! It's and if time. you like the content that they produce uh, from our community in Toronto, feel free to go over there and show your support. Um, so both players we know are zero zero. So Tim, we've got an updated overlay now. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. That's a one health Nim. Yeah, we got our own play, our overlay. It looks like as a, we got a, a one health Nim who can't do white maneuvers and yes. rolls one less attack die on yes. his TLTs. Yes. If the quiz stays on Nim six here, he can pop him this turn. But it'll be a question of whether or not the quiz will have to take damage from Miranda or both to do it. Because don't forget, Nim. Miranda, Inquisitor, are all PS8. Yes. So the question would be, does Evan one forward quick draw to finish Nim off, take a bomb damage, and PS kill Nim? Or does Evan bug out with quick draw and trade damage on the Inquisitor for one of uh, Ev uh, Cameron's bombers? Well, I think if I'm Evan, if I can sacrifice my quick draw uh, to kill Nim, Inquisitor versus Miranda, in my opinion, with the palp still in the game, I give that game to Inquisitor. Personally quiz? speaking. Personally speaking. That Quiz versus constantly Miranda. Being able, constantly be able to put damage through, even at range three. He's got yeah, Miranda's moving first, so you know he'll be able to use his push, his his push to his advantage. Um, he, you know, auto thrusters are really good against TLT. Turns out, especially when you have focus evade and Palpatine. So, yeah, Inquisitor, we'll Inquisitor versus Miranda in the late game is a really tough matchup because Miranda's worth more points, but Evan can keep the shuttle alive. If Evan can keep the shuttle alive at all. Um, just a reminder, Victor, the, uh, the the shuttle has no shields left. We're at half health on that, uh, and 16 points on the board for Cameron. Then uh, what will happen is if, if Yor just limps along at one health and, uh, and, and Evan can win on points, he could also use Yor to pull Miranda into positions that um, Cam doesn't want to be in in order to try and trap him. But the quiz is going to be hard-pressed to finish Miranda by himself. Evan so I think has to try and keep Quick Draw alive. In the last two turns, we have seen five bombs. Yes. That's a lot of bombs for only two ships to be able to it's do. Two and a half each in two turns. 
I mean, it just goes <laughs> to show you the power of Rebel Bombing. It's 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 intense. It's a very strong art. So it's one of the yeah. reasons that we we're happy to get this on um, on round one. Is that Toronto Regionals? Yeah. It was an extremely prevalent archetype that we saw, and since then, I think it's fair to say that a lot of uh, mechanics have arisen in the meta to uh, to combat bombers. Um, Ghost Fen is one of them. Yeah. You've got uh, Pal Bases here with Yor, which we saw uh, take down Nim Miranda at one of the System Open series in the uh, in the United States. So I, I think that this is going to be a really interesting uh, a, a, a late game here. Evan just ballsy blasting in there. Going to try and dodge Nim's primary arc yep. to not take a... Um, uh, a revenge shot, but if he's not careful, he'll have no tokens for Miranda's TLT shot. I think he's going to push for the boost. Okay. Um, I feel like he's going to push for the boost here. You feel like he's going to push for the boost? Okay, well. There you go. Yeah. I think I think he's going to rely on Palpatine and three attack dice. So yeah, so I think so that that makes sense for me too. We got the three sloop coming here from Quick Draw. He's gonna dodge the proton bomb. He's gonna put forward arcs where he needs to go. The shuttle's gonna stay alive. This is still gonna be a very tense tournament. Tur sorry, very tense round for these guys. Because we're not 100% sure how it's gonna all match out. But it'd be good to see this. So what Evan's doing right now is he's using the two template to check to see if his barrel roll fits. Just as a, uh, a tip to those of you newer players out there, if you're curious about not wanting to move your ships around and, and see what happens when you're trying to attempt a barrel roll, because your base is range one template across, you can always use a two to see if your ship will fit. They're making a judge call to see if he is able to fit, and if he is, he will have to take that action because that's how it works. If you call for a barrel roll action and you do fit any place on that side, you do have to execute the barrel roll, and that's what the judge call is most likely for. Okay, so Devin's in for the judge call to see if he's able to do that barrel roll? Yeah, they tried procking it with the two straight, as I was explaining to the viewers, that that's a nice little cheat that they can figure out if they want to learn whether or not their positions are going to fit. It's a good way to ch check it, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, you, you always want to check it with the actual piece or call a judge. Which is exactly what the call was, and that's what happened. Judges ruled that it's possible. Quick draw wants to save as much health as possible here. He doesn't want to take another proton bomb because well, he'll just die. I also think that Evan was actually hoping to get Arc on Nim with Quick Draw to kill Quick Draw with Nim and then still have the ability to. I think he could still use be a skill with Quick Draw here. Yeah, that's what he's going for, I think. Inquisitor might even be able to do some damage on Miranda. Miranda, which is why I think Evan really wanted that barrel. If Evan can save Palt for defense. Absolutely. That's exactly what I think his plan is. You, that's, yeah. I completely agree with you. I think that's exactly his plan there. And there you go. Three hits, two, it's enough to get Nim off the board. So Nim doesn't die to... Uh, he oh, does, yeah. He does, he just dies to the one, yeah. No. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I can do basic math. It's been well, a busy that's, morning. That's exactly it. Oh, I'm going to need another coffee after this one, man. Uh, Irish coffee? No, not Irish coffee. I mean, it is It is the right weekend for it. Uh, don't All forget, right, folks, so coming up after this match, we've got our interview with Tashemis Old Galahad. He's in town from the Emerald Isle to so talk all like, things X-Wing. It looks like um, Cam has decided to burn, not burn a shield. Actually, burn a shield in the opposite direction to give Nim Miranda a range one shot. Uh, because he did roll four dice. So yeah. Evan's got arc, and Evan's... And Evan managed to evade all of it. Yeah. So this squarely puts... Evan in a in a positive footing in this situation. Drops right it like now. it's hot. Yeah. And is that three damage into Miranda? That's hit crit crit on Miranda. They got a shaken pilot and a major explosion. Ooh, does not hit. Yeah, Malbor and Death Revived, you're right. And Quick Try is I mean it's 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 hard not to want to fly her if you're flying Imperials right now. I normally never do just because I miss true arc dodger aces and it's also probably because I'm not good enough to fly her because she's very difficult to manage because once that ability is gone you've, you've it, it's still a good ship at PS9 with all the tricks and, and things but she still does suffer from a lot of the, the trappings that trap up other imperial aces low health and, and easy to hit well it's true to me it's very true 
I mean, um, but the, the I, reason I still we can't here, believe Evan in that in that last round there. He did no mod modifications at all. Yeah. And he just dropped, hit, hit, crit. Yeah, that was honestly a massive swing. That was a massive swing in his advantage. It's clear, that's, it's clear that he's using the zero point EPT. That's going to be the theme of the weekend. So that is um, definitely true. That was a definitely one of those rounds. I just, I mean, that coupled with the bombs that he rolled earlier, it would seem that Evan's green underwear is just paying dividends for him at this point. He, he is definitely in an advantage, advantageous situation. However, he is going to get bombed this turn. He's probably, he could lose Inquisitor to a cluster mine. I guarantee you Cameron's going to do a hard two and uh, drop cluster mines. It, well, it's a, it's a question of whether or not it's worth it. And, you know, if, if Quick Draw gets right in there... And and does uh, some damage. He could very well PS kill Miranda, but at what cost? Um, that proton bomb is not able to be held this turn. It's going to explode this turn. Right. So you better not be close to it when it goes off, yeah, because absolutely. it's 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 going to be all aboard the pain train when that happens. And that's another good uh, interaction to point out to the viewers who might not know the ins and outs and the trickeries of what goes on. So uh, Nim's ability is at the beginning of combat, and then when he's killed, he's removed at the end in the middle of combat. So that proton does still get to stay behind the round that he's killed in, if that's the one he held back. Hundred percent. At this point, we'd like to. Um, just mention uh, again, thanks to Sumit uh, for, for joining me. Um, a reminder to our users that the, the Canadian National FFG Championships are being broadcast simultaneously on VWTV Live. So there is a second stream available where they're casting the L5R today. Um, we're going to be doing two days of X Wing, day 1A and day 1B, which are going to comprise both of uh, six rounds of Swiss. And then all the four and twos make it, and they're going to go to day two, which is Sunday. And then there's going to be two more rounds of progression cut Swiss, followed by uh, a top 16 cut. Uh, so far, we've got two full days, so well over 120 players entered in the event. Uh, we'll get a hot final head count for you guys later in the day. Um, so far, I'm seeing uh, X-Wing groups from all over the provinces. We've got some folks in from Montreal. We've got some locals in Toronto. Uh, we've got our friends in Manitoba chiming in on the stream. Uh, a couple guys from Vancouver. Salt Squadron up from Niagara Falls. It's going to be good. Oh, so Quiz... Quiz is so going to clip all three bombs here. So he hit the first two again and uh, managed to only take the one damage. And this time he palped, and that's it. He okay. gets quiz. Evan has managed to use a zero-point EPT for the luck of the Irish twice. He has dodged a total of six cluster mine tokens <laughs> and taken two damage from them. And let's not... Let's not um, let's and not then there was the, the just the, the drop roll where he did three hits with Inquisitor. Well, let's not, let's not uh, counter-effect how awesome Cam is playing to be able to do that. Like, he's managed to hit Inquisitor with all three cluster mines twice already now. Like, that's amazing. What do you, like, what do, you do when you, you just don't bomb like that? You can't. Right? You're doing everything right in that situation, and there's not much else you can do. I mean, sometimes, again, you know, as great of a player as you are, sometimes it's, I have to tell this to myself to remember this too, sometimes there are, there is dice advantages. We've got two phenomenal players on the table right now, and sometimes it swings your way, sometimes it doesn't. Um, they're both doing their game plans correctly. I know initially Evan said he wanted to try to take Miranda out, but when he had the opportunity to put all that damage into, quick tr into Nim, it obviously proved uh, uh, useful for him. Evan's going to have to barrel roll to get out of the range of that proton bomb and sacrifice his arc on Miranda, possibly. I think he might be able to clip her. I think he might still have it, but you're right. We'll have to see on the measurement there. Okay. But you're right. It's better, better to do that and not take the proton bomb. Miranda might very well just die to this uh, this bomb here. So, yeah. okay, Miranda taking her own proton bomb. Okay, and then quick draw will probably PS kill. Okay, well, st stay tuned, folks, because round one's going to wrap up.